Hey, good morning. Good afternoon. Oh, uh, good evening. <laughs> Good night. Yes, very nice. <laughs> Yo, N.O. is in the building. What's wrong with it? That's yeah. right. Young hey. Greatness is Young here. Young Greatness What's is here. What's up with it? <laughs> How are you, man? Man, I'm cool. And what's problem? You have a, you have a, you bring across the exact same energy of meeting you immediately as your record, as Moolah. Oh, yeah? Feels good. Yeah. <laughs> Seem like a happy guy. Man, I'm cool. And I'm, I'm blessed, man. I can't complain. Well, he's in a good space. You know, a lot of good things are happening for him. You already know. It's moolah season. Yeah, how how has moolah season been treating you? <laughs> Man, I ain't been getting no sleep, but I'm happy. You just, just run around promoting this record, huh? I run around promoting shows, more shows, more shows. It's just lit right are now. You, are you surprised, or did you know that this record was... I mean, when you hear it, I think my uh, my agent, Dipperstein, oh. picture the most agent of all agents, okay? That's who put you on? So, oh, yeah. Suited Jewish agent. Was like, have you heard Young Greatness? <laughs> And I was like, at the, at the time, I was like, time I was like, nah. And he was like, you got to hear this. And he played it, and I was like, I'm not going to lie. That sounds like a hit right away. Wow. Right. I mean, it does feel like one of those records. So did you know that this would this would be the one that would get you moving? Uh, of course. Uh, I knew it like once I, I made the record. I knew it. I made the record in like 10 minutes. So once I did it, the reaction from, you know, Jazzy Faye, he produced the record. Um, you know, just everybody that was in the studio, you know, it, it was a crazy reaction. I said, it's the one. You know what I'm saying? It felt I'm, good. In, I'm interested in the Young Greatness story. As am I. Can we start with the name Young Greatness? Um, I mean, it's obvious. Is it as obvious as it sounds? I mean, I was given that name, like, man, from one of my homies. He actually, the reason why I started rapping, his name was Deuce. Uh, he passed away like two years ago. And when we first started, when he first, you know, really started embarking on music in New Orleans, I wasn't rapping there. But I used to bring him to the studio every day. So me going to the studio every day, it kind of rubbed off on me where I wanted to rap because I got tired of sitting in the car waiting for him to finish his session. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I just say, well, I need to make some, be useful. When he finishes the two, three hours, I need to get me two, three in. You know, because that just was the thing. You know, everybody in New music is cultural in New Orleans. So if we friends and I'm rapping, you're going to start rapping, you're going to start rapping, and it's going to just form into something. So once I started rapping, I, I didn't have a name. I just was rapping. And I said, what, what I'm going to call myself? He was like, man, I'm going to figure something out. And he just came back one day and he was like, man, you're going to call yourself Young Greatness. And it just stuck with me, you know, all the years. You know what I'm saying? And that's a lot to live up to, though. Yeah, like, I, damn, I, I got better yeah. be good. I'm very critical of the new artist names. As you know, I complain about everything. Yeah. I like the name Young Greatness. I don't know. There's something about it. There's a lot of Lils and there's a lot of Youngs. But Young Greatness, is it, there's, something, there's something there. It's pretty good. It stands out. Uh, do you have greatness. A, does music run in your family? Uh... No, actually, sports does. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I read they used to play football. Yeah, like like sports run really in just New Orleans. You know, New Orleans is a a, a sports city. Football, basketball, baseball. We have a lot of talent down there. You know, and music as well. You know what I'm saying? But uh, sports actually run in my family. Any 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 like anyone make it big from your family? Uh, a couple of people. You know what I'm saying? They you know went pro, didn't stay long. You know what I'm saying? But, but they but the, in their era they yeah. were they were like they were the man in town. Yeah. Um. Now. Take us back to where were you at and how old were you around Hurricane Katrina? Uh, Hurricane Katrina, I was 20. And t take us through that experience because uh, I know it affected you quite a bit. Well, you know, when Hurricane Katrina hit, it, I think it, it affected everybody because it took you out of your comfort zone. You know what I'm saying? Just think of being one day being home here at the radio station and, and tomorrow <laughs> you live in New Orleans with a fr like just you and your body. Like nothing else, no money, no nothing. So you know that's kind of that's kind of crazy, right? You know, just coming from the station and then you, you have just, no stuff, you have no anything, you have, you have nothing. You just have to get on a bus and go to New Orleans tomorrow. Where where in New Orleans is your family from exactly? We are the Seven World, out the Saint Bernard Project. That's the downtown area. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. New Orleans is divided in between downtown and uptown. I'm from downtown. And how bad did you guys catch it? Real bad. That was the downtown. You know that that was the area where the lake where the lake was. You know what I'm saying? Where the levees was. So we caught it. That was, we was in the worst area. You know what I'm saying? Where the How? water was like 20 feet. Did you know early on you had to get out? Um, yeah, we, well, really and truthfully, they asked people to evacuate, but we get hurricanes a lot, so it wasn't so, like... So nobody ever really took it serious at the beginning, right? I nah, can imagine. nobody never took it serious, but when, like, two days, a day or two after the hurricane hit, you know, the water's rising and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? That's when people went to saying, like, man, something not right. You so where'd you, where'd you end up going first when you had to leave your home? Um, I went... I actually went in the projects, you know, because that was the best place to go because it's brick. Mm. And it sit up, it sit high. So, you know, I was in the projects by the rest of my family. We was like on the third floor, third level of the projects, all the way at the top. 
And um, you know, when, the, when Hurricane hit, it was cool. It, it didn't really affect us because we was in a brick building. The power went out and stuff like that. You know, we couldn't shower and, you know, food was bad. You know, we had ice ice and water and stuff like that. But um, but you're trapped. We were trapped. It was like 50 of us. For right how now. long? About three days. Man. About three days. And then, like, you know, we was, uh we had to, like, like evacuate, rescue, was rescued, taken to the nearest interstate and jump on a bus and go to Houston. And then you went to Houston. Yeah, but yeah. so it was your choice to go to specifically to Houston, or they kind of nah, were like, "This is where you're going. This yeah. is where you're going." Yeah, you have a choice. You had to get on a bus and go where they, wherever they take you. How does it work with your family, though? Like, are you can you stay with your family, or basically they just kind of divide you guys up? You guys got to go where you got to go. It was, you know, it was, you know, if you with your family at the time, yeah. yeah but if you're not, then people was going different buses was going different places. different places. So if you if you're not yeah. with the people, then people can end up somewhere else. Yeah. So how long you end up staying in Houston? I stayed in Houston for two, three years. Wow. So you, did you end up liking it? I love Houston. Houston was Houston like a second home to me. And um, at what what point, at what age did you really start, did you start with the rhyming? Well, I'm going to tell you once Katrina hit and I was in Houston. And around that time, that was the era of the Houston. Houston was like running a rap game. They had Mike Jones, Hot, Paul mm. Wall. Paul, everything. Like, no, like Chameleonaire. Yeah, Chameleonaire. Um... Man, you name it. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody was flaming. You know what I'm saying? Bum B, Pimp C. Yep. You, know you have a relationship with some of those guys? I met, I met a couple of them. You know, we pretty cool. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We see each other. You know what I'm saying? They remember me. I remember them. You know what I'm saying? The times, you know, that we had while I was in Houston. So, you know, it was our love. They showed me a lot of love because I was young and hungry. Right, right. So, so wait, so was, did you start down there? Well, actually, when, you know, I, I already was, you know, doing music before, you know, before Katrina hit. You know, I actually started in, like, 2003. You know what I'm saying? And once I got to Houston, once after Katrina hit, that's when I started taking it real serious. And I started, like, really putting more effort and push into trying to make it and get to the next level. And now here we sit in 2016 and you have a smash hit. I mean, it's, it's I got to tell you, it's kind of a, it's an inspiring story because you've been grinding at it for a minute. Yeah, but you I, didn't I, just stay in Houston, though. I, I, am I, correct me if I'm wrong, you moved to Atlanta also not, afterwards? No, nah, I, I, what I actually <laughs> did was once I... Uh, you know, I had went away to prison for a few years, mm -hmm. like in 2007. I was released like 2010. And once I came home from prison, you know, I, I formulated a plan to live in New Orleans seven days and live in Atlanta seven days until I make it. Because I knew Atlanta had the strong resources like New York. We don't have that in New Orleans. You know what I'm saying? There is no pipeline for you to make it and for you to get to the next level. So there, There's a music scene, but it's more of a cultural, yeah, actual cultural. music scene. Yeah, it's cultural, you know what I'm saying? But as far as like... The business. Really like breaking, you know what I'm saying, record and, and going to the next level, it's not going to happen. You know, so I was one of the people that understood the business and understood what I had to do to get to the next level. So I just did that for like three years and then it just popped. So you moved to Atlanta. Who did you connect with in Atlanta that really took you somewhere else? Well, um, with me going to Atlanta, I met a lot of... Uh, resource for people by just working, going to different studios. That was my plan, just to uh, kind of like infiltrate the market and not take over, but, you know, make my brand and my name strong in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? And I met a host of people, but it wasn't until I met my manager, Reese, on the young lady who's with me right now. She actually, um, you know, took me to a whole different level. You know, she heard my music. I was at uh, V103 doing the interview, and I had a record around the time with Juvenile called Buku. And when she heard it, you know, she was like, man, this a, you know, this a hit. You know, we need to start working. You know, and I can help you get to the next level. And from there, you know, she took my music to Coach KMP, who have quality control, you know, with the Migos and myself. Mm -hmm. And once they heard it, they called. It was like, we ready, we ready to sign you. And that was it. And, and, now, yeah. and now how we end up at the Akon situation? Yeah. Well, you know, um, once I signed with quality control, Akon's brother Omar and one of his best friends, Miles, they brought him to the studio because I, I, I went, immediately once I signed, I stood in the studio like two months straight. I ain't leave. So I'm making, like, hit after hit. And Omar was there, his brother. He was like, I got to bring Akon here. He have to see this. So when he came, he heard the records. And every song I played, he was like, that's a single. That's a single. That's a single. And he told, you know, he told Reese, Coach and P, he was like, man, I want to do something to help greatness. I need to be a part of this. And shortly after that, he called me. He was like, I want to manage you with Reese. Yeah. And so now you have co-management. Yeah, now I have Akon, Reese. And I have Coach K and P on the label side. You got a squad. You got, a, some, you got some good people around you. Yeah. <laughs> What's been the best part of this uh, experience? Like when you look back at three years, you were in jail, everything you went through with Katrina. What's the part right now that's like the the most dreamlike that you would have been like, damn, I can't believe I get to do that? Well, the part that's crazy to me, like 
some I still feel normal, but every day something happened to let me know like, yo, you out of here. You know, like, I'm just walking in New York. Hey, you greatness? I need to take a picture with you. You know, and I I, I still can't believe that. Like you're, you're still just surprised that people know who you are, want to come yeah, take a picture. Yeah, I'm, I still can't believe it. like that's the most shocking thing to me ever. You know what I'm saying? So it's a blessing, to, you know what I'm saying too. Because coming from New Orleans, it's so hard, man. I know. It's hard, bro. I know. It's hard. If you can make it from New Orleans, you can make it from anywhere. So I just feel I feel good about that. You know what I'm saying? Just saying I, I made it, you know what I'm saying? And to give the other artists from the city hope. You know what I'm saying? Because there's either two things in New Orleans. Either you die or you go to jail. All the great rappers from New Orleans, that happens. You know what I'm saying? His, you know, Soldier Slim was one of the dopest rappers ever, period. You know, and he ain't never really have his chance because you have to... You have to have a street life to support your music. You know what I'm saying? There is nobody that could, that's going to meet you and say, okay, I'm going to invest in you to take right, you to right, the next right. level and take you off the street. You and know then what you I'm have saying? consequences because of that. Yeah. So, so it's either you you die or go to jail. You know? Well, look. Look at the bright side. You already went to jail, so you should be good now. <laughs> yeah. Let's get that out of the way. I'm not going <laughs> back there. Uh, how, how, how difficult was jail? Three years. Um, It was difficult because I had to watch, you know, people that I felt like, you know, I was just as talented as, you know, like, just pop up and just be bubbling. You know what I'm saying? Drake was one of them. I used to get magazines and, and, and CDs and stuff in jail, and I used to be listening like, damn. My, I used to listen to Drake and Gucci Man all day in jail, and I was like, man, I need to get out of here, man. I got to get out because I was ready. I'm a competitor, just sports. So, you know, um, listening to their music, it was motivation. Um, I became fans of them, and it just made me hungry, you know what I'm saying, while I was in prison. So that was kind of like my turning point for us focusing. And I read their stories and their backlog and stuff like that, some of the things they've been through. You know what I'm saying? I was just ready to get out and, and refocus on my music. So you enjoy the competitive part of hip-hop? Because that's something that separates hip-hop from other genres, right? Is of there, course. There I, is that part. You know, you know, you know hip-hop will always be competitive. You know what I'm saying? In a positive way, though. You know, everybody, you know, like nobody wants to be number two. Who remembers number two? You know what I'm saying? So me, I'm shooting for number one. Period and everything. And if you have to say it, if you point blank, do we? Do you think it goes without saying that Drake is the number one right now? Um, at least as far as popularity, et cetera, go. I mean, I feel like he's, you know, to me. I mean, he he he. Got, you got to give it to him. Mm -hmm. You know, just period. You know, like he keep coming with him. As long as he coming with him, he gonna stay at that top spot. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you can't really you can't argue with what, what's great and what's destined to be. You know, when it's for you. You know, when God says your time is your time. So it's homie time right now. He winning. He's been a hell of a run too. I yeah. see you're, being, you're in the in the running for a double XL, the freshman the freshman list, right? Yeah. You peep that. I peep that too. Yeah, it feels like it feels like that's something that could happen. What would that yeah. mean to you? Would that would that be something that you'd be really proud of? Um, to be honest with you, you know, at this point, you know how I feel about it. I feel like it's a you know it's a dope you know it's dope to have the opportunity and be considered. But you know I don't really focus on that. I focus on on the art. You know what I'm saying? I love music, and as long as I'm making music. And, and I'm making hit records, you know what I'm saying? I stay on the charts, you know what I'm saying? I'm be considered as one of the greats. So, you know, just, you know, to have them consider me, you know what I'm saying, it's cool, but I don't base my career ab around, you know what I'm saying, uh, being on the freshman list, you know what I'm saying? Because if you look at history that repeats itself, a lot of artists that made the magazine, you know what I'm saying, some of them, you don't even know where they at today. No, nah, some blew up and some... Yeah, yeah. you know, you know what I'm saying? Well, did you ever get approached by any of the people that are notable from New Orleans? The, you know, the uh, the cash monies of yes. the world. I, I talked to Juvenile, like, once every other week. He called me, you know what I'm saying, just giving me, you know, pointers and, and just rooting for me. You know what I'm saying? But you and never met with Birdman or anything or um, we, Mac Main or anything like we, that? We talk, me and Mac talk, me and Mac cool. I've been knowing Mac since we was kids, you know what I'm saying? So me and Mac have a good relationship. And, you know, I spoke to Birdman and Slim several times, you know what I'm saying? Um, also Master P as well. What about artists like August Alcina? Nah, we never really spoke. You know, I we I seen him. I've been in his presence, but we didn't really say too much to each other. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? But he's a dope artist. Yeah, yeah, he's pretty dope. And yeah. he's gonna be on. Well, he's gonna be on. A, who's next? Yeah, the Young Greatness. Yay. Yeah, yes, tomorrow yes, night. Yes, tomorrow yes. night, headlining. Yeah, yeah. Who's next at SOBs? Which is always, you know, one of those cool moments. You know, early on in an artist's career. Right. Seeing what that New York show... How many times have you played? Have you played in New York before? No, this is my first show. So this show. will be your first show ever. Yeah. That's pretty big. <laughs> this is Young Greatness <sighs> stepping onto the stage in New York City for the first time ever tomorrow yeah, yeah. night. Super tight. Uh, yeah, I'm ready. Well, I'm and, excited. And you can only imagine it'll be a who's who in the audience considering this guy has... 
you know, everyone's on his team. He's got President Obama and <laughs> Lady, Lady Gaga <laughs> and, you know, Anderson Cooper and <laughs> random people. Um, hey, listen, man, it's a real, real pleasure getting to talk to you and uh, and see this record blow up, man. You seem like Appreciate a good dude. And, and I got to tell you, and you got a pretty tight logo. It's all good. <laughs> it's pretty tight. It's pretty good, right? <laughs> because it's like a play on the peace sign. It's like a peace sign almost. Uh -huh. But then it flips into a G, and yeah. then you get the YG. It's just greatness. It's young greatness. It's just greatness, <laughs> baby.